everyone's time. We're going to get started. Um, welcome. My name is Beth Albach. I am the Assistant Program Manager for the Southeast Pennsylvania PTAC. And today we are presenting subcontracting in the government market, a one on one with SBA's procurement center representatives. And just a few housekeeping things. We are now known as Apex Accelerators. We are formerly known as PTAC. Um, we're, funded, we're a federally funded program through the Department of Defense. We provide no cost government contracting assistance. Our services include a wide range of services, such as registrations for social and economic status applications, market research, bid match, and assisting companies with understanding solicitations and bids. Um, Southeast region of Pennsylvania includes our offices at Kutztown, Lehigh, and Widener Universities and the Philadelphia city area. We work with companies from Berks, Bucks, Chester, Delaware, Lehigh, Montgomery, Northampton, and Philadelphia counties. So if you're not within one of these counties, no worries. Uh, we, we can help you find the PTAC that services your particular business location. <clears throat> Again, Procurement Technical Assistance Program is now under a rebranding process. We're under new management with the U.S. Department of Defense Office of Small Business Programs. And what does that mean for you as a company? You will still receive the same great service navigating government contract and marketing, but with an increased scope and resources to support your company. So until the change is official, you may still receive emails that come from PTAC or documentation that lists PTAP, PTAC, or Apex Accelerators. Don't worry, it's still us. <laughs> and if you have any questions about that transition, you can contact us at PTAC at kutztown.edu. But... As we move on today, I just want to ask you to please join me in welcoming Ms. Fitzia Justice and Ms. Rosetta Jackson from the SBA, who will be presenting today, and I will turn it over to them. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. You can hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. So welcome to the Small Business Administration. Today, we're gonna to be talking about, the training is gonna be about the small business subcontracting. Let me see. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, as you mentioned, Fisia Justice, she is the Procurement Center representative. And uh, Fisia, you wanna let them know your area? Hi, I'm Fitzia Justice, and I serve Area 2, and I have a number of um, installations that I am responsible for. That is all listed on the website, but you, on the screen, you have my information, my cell phone number, and my email address if you need to contact me. And I'm Rosetta Jackson. I'm going to be uh, working with Area 2 as well. Uh, I just uh, joined SBA May 8th. So um, you guys will be hearing from me as well. So what is a subcontractor? And the definition that we have is a, a vendor other than the prime contractor, uh, furnishes any supplies, materials, equipment, or services under a prime contract. A subcontractor can be small or other than small business. Some government contractors require large companies to subcontract under them, and this promotes uh, business opportunities. And just to give me more space, let me see if I can cut this camera off. You don't have to do that. Okay, I'm trying to give myself space. Okay. Who is required to subcontract and what are the requirements? So who is required contracts awarded to large businesses? And the, requir the, uh, the requirements as the value of the contract must be greater than the uh, 75 acquisition threshold, 750,000 and uh, 1.5 million for construction. A proposed modification of clause can cause the total contract uh, dollars to exceed, which would require a subcontracting plan as well. And this is according to the reference in the FAR. 
R19.705-2. The intent of the subcontracting plan, the intent of the plan is provide opportunities for small businesses and um, also establish specific dollar and percent goals for each uh, social economic categories. And as you see here for uh, hub zones, small disadvantaged, woman-owned, service disabled, veteran-owned businesses. So when we go back to that one screen, so when there's a subcontracting plan by a large business, um, they would have to provide these opportunities for our small business in each category. And zero, zero dollar and zero percent is not a gold, and it will not be accepted when it comes in for review. Next slide. The advantages of subcontracting. So the advantages here um, of subcontracting, um, you can hire a contractor or subcontractor. It provides more flexibility with a specific task. Uh, you can hire a contract subcontractor for jobs requiring specific expertise and provide turnaround times. So if you hire a subcontractor or contractor, then your own staff can focus on your day-to-day uh, -day business uh, operations. Uh, there's opportunity for the contractor or subcontractor to start the required requirements within short notice. Uh, you might have like a, a large number of workers that are required, and you can assign that task, particular task to subcontractor. Uh, using contractors or subcontractors, you can often specify the period of performance regarding uh, the work project that's being contracted. And contracting and subcontracting allows opportunity to obtain permanent or temporary coverage of a work project. So the disadvantages of subcontracting, uh, it may cost your business more than the equivalent daily rate for employing uh, someone. For example, um, relying on contractors or subcontractor, your, your business may not have developed skills in-house. Um, you might get resentment from staff from using contractors being paid more money. Um, you know, contractors' work ethics may not be compliant with agency guidelines. You have no co direct control over the quality of subcontractors' work. So we do have uh, some limitations on subcontracting and the limitations rule is found in uh, 13 CFR, the Code of Federal Regulations 125.6. And also you can find it in FAR 52.219-14. And the rules, they set limits on the prime contract and subcontractor. Um, that are similarly, similarly situated. So um, if you have a similarly uh, situated entity in the first chair subcontractor uh, that have the same social economical designations required, for instance, uh, small disadvantages, veterans own small business and 8A, uh, if the small business prime contract the subcontracts to a similarly situated uh, entity towards the prime contractor's requirements, performance is considered not to be subcontracted for the purposes of this limit. But um, the limitations on subcontracting rule exists, ensuring small business don't serve as a pass through for larger entities, which um, allows small business the resources needed to complete set asides and sole source contracts. Um, placing the, you know, placing these limits on the subcontract ensures the small business uh, get the meaningful amount of work when they uh, when they are subcontracting. It uh, strengthens the oversight of prime contractor reporting of subcontracting plans and goals. It gives the opportunity of pathways for small business to become involved with federal co uh, contracting. And uh, to determine how much can be subcontracted uh, and apply the designated percentage, uh, contractors should look at the dollar value of the contract itself. So if the designated percentage 
let's say for example, it's 500,000, then you say 50% of 500,000 or 25, 250,000 will be the maximum uh, that could be uh, subcontracted. Um, and also if you uh, go to, if you look at the FAR regulations at 52.219, uh, it explains that this rule is necessary because there are consequences for not following the limitations on the subcontracting rule. Um, but, you know, it can, it can even go as uh, far as substantial bonds placed on contracts is impossibly even debarment. So uh, it's very important that, uh, you know, you really research the FAR when you're talking about the limitations on subcontracting. Next slide. Okay. So now that you know about subcontracting and what the requirements are for your for the large businesses, because they have to if contract over seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or one point five million for for construction contracts, where do you find these opportunities? Well, here are a few that we're gonna talk about. And one is a pre-solicitation conference. At a pre-solicitation conference, it's an early exchange of information. It gives um, you the opportunity to talk to the program office and to uh, the other stakeholders. And depending on the type of conference, um, you can do that. Let's take a look at the one. This one is going to be held actually today. And it is in SAM.gov. It's posted in SAM. Oh, here it is. And this one is actually going to be held today. It's, a, it's going to discuss the draft RFP and it's a pre-solicitation conference. And if you look down here, you have the opportunity. You're looking for people that are in NAICS code 541330, which is engineering services. But it's, in, it's a time for you to meet with your vendors and other vendors as well, because what you wanna do is build a relationship, partnership. When I was in contracting, I held pre-proposal conferences. And after the discussion was over and I discussed the, the actual solicitation with them, I left 45 minutes for the vendors to meet each other, to talk to each other. The perfect time for vendors to discuss other opportunities they have available and to network. And that's what you want to do, you want to be able to do. So beside that, let me get back to the screen, Bruce. There. Okay. There's also, there are also vendor outreach days and meet and greets. I'm gonna start for one, like for example, the Security Exchange Commission has a vendor outreach day monthly. Their registration is required and it's done through their minority and Office of Minority and Women Inclusion. This is a link and the link will basically take you to how you can schedule um, an appointment with them and register for the events they have coming up. That's one way of me doing it. Then if you look in here at SAM, there's another SAM.gov hosting. This is an actual virtual industry day, and it is with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. It's going to be held on June 27th and allows the agency and industry to have meaningful discussions about cybersecurity capabilities challenges and innovative technologies. And if you look down, you can see they don't have any specification. It does require you to register, but it's another opportunity to meet and greet other vendors. You can also see their acquisition planning forecasting system, of what's coming ahead. And this is on sam.gov. It was posted up and the event's gonna take place on June 27th from one to two. So feel free to take a look at that. Okay. 
every year, every year agencies have to post their upcoming forecast. Now, for the agency we just left, that was in August. But if you, there's a, the H agency has a forecasting site. So we're gonna click on here. And this will give you a list of various agencies and their procurement forecast of what's coming ahead. You can even, they also talk about the business opportunities on here that you can see what they have. This is the Agency of International Development. It opens up and it tells you how to work with the USAID. And it gives you the instructions, it gives you the forecast, and it also gives you points of contact. So you can, um, you can contact them and talk to them about business forecasts that come up that are available. So that's just with the USAID, like I said, oh, go back to it. There are many agencies here. As you can see, from Social Security all the way, Department of Education, and each agency has that. Now, the SBA has a prime contractor list. And on the prime contractor list, it's basically a tool, and it's located on the SBA website. And it tells a tool to locate your prime contractor's website and access requirements. The point is that you want to make connections, you want to make them as early as possible, and you want to meet and build partnerships, relationships with vendors, especially if they're in the same mix code that you're in. So on this website, you can see the top, it gives you the, the business name, their unique ID number, which we used to call the DUNS number, the contracting agency name. So for this one is the Department of Navy. And it goes on to tell you also the contracting officer's name, the procurement ID, the period of performance. But besides that, what you really want is the vendor and where they're located and all their information in their NICS code description. So that way it gives you an opportunity to, 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 to study, like, is this somebody that I can partner with? What do I have to offer to another, another contractor that we can build a relationship and we can get a contract together? So that's another very good, useful tool. Okay. Subnet. Now, Subnet is... As you can see, this is also that tells you about the Small Business Administration subcontracting network. A map comes up. And if you click on any state that you're interested in, let's click on California. As you can see in California, here is um, a contractor. It looks like they need construction management services. This, uh, the performance is scheduled to start in April of 2024. These are the additional NAICS codes. Do you have these NAICS codes? Have you provided these services in the past or are you currently performing them? If you are, this is a good time. You have a point of contact to talk to them. Talk to them before something is awarded if you can. If not, you wanna establish some type of relationship because it's probably easier to get an award if you're already with that prime vendor. So that, that connection is already established as opposed to sometimes waiting till after award. But you don't know that. At any time that you can make build a relationship, take that opportunity. But this is just one example in California. So if you look at the map again and you see Texas, and it, it, it varies. Um, Here's West Point contractors. This gives you information. So these are helpful tools for you to seek out business opportunities. FedConnect is another one. This is another place besides SAM.gov that the agencies post their requirements. Um, most people use SAM 
but there are other agencies that use Fed Connect and I don't have access to it, but this is a, you can, it's, it doesn't, won't cost you anything to get into Fed Connect and search um, opportunities. They post besides solicitations, they also post sources sought notices, um, pre, other pre-solicitation notices, um, sometimes market research. So that's another good source. And we already looked at SAM. And in SAM, you can you can search, you can search by NAICS code um, for opportunities. You can search by um, location too, I believe. But I definitely know you can search by your NAICS code to find, and also by um, agency. Okay. Government-wide acquisition contracts, which are also known as GWACs or your General Services Administration Federal Supply Schedules. These are your contracts under GSA. These you are also you also hear the GWACs um, heard called by um, management management contracts. They're also called, they have different names, different agencies call them different names, but this is the ones under the GWAC and you will see that there's 8A STARS 3, Alliant, CIP, SP3, this, the SCIO, SP3 Small Business, this is NASA Soup and VETS 2. Now, they also, each of these contracts also provides you with a list of vendors. 8A stars three, if you click on, it'll tell you their industry partners. Not only will it tell you that, but if you look at the spreadsheet, the partners, it also will let you know when the vendor is exiting the 8A program. And also joint venture managing members 8A exit. So you have the contract number, Moved all the way over. The contract number, the, the vendor, and if they're doing business as some other vendor, the address, city, state, program manager. You have a point of contact and you have an email address. So that's the 8A stars. And they all offer pretty much the same of the same information. Let's go back to, I'm gonna check to one other thing. And this is on CIO SP3. I just was looking at that yesterday. They also have a virtual industry day. There you can request a virtual industry day under this contract benefits. They'll tell you, um, you can, bring in subject matter experts, but it's a great way to basically learn about the contract, the type of contract. So fill out the information, gives you the information here, request virtual industry day, put in your information and select a, whether it's going to be IT services solutions, small business IT services or IT commodity solutions. So there's another opportunity for you to um, it's in front of someone, the program managers, and talk about your capabilities and how you can um, support what they're looking for. And there's this is one is called Ability One. And Ability One is basically um, it provides employment and opportunities for people who are blind or have significant disabilities. But there is an opportunity to be an authorized distributor. And if you look here on, it gives you the information and the application information. I don't know a lot about Ability One, but I do know that it is, it's a source that some people you know, never think about um, to, to consider, but it's an opportunity. Any chance that you get to, to to discuss what you are offering. You never know who may need, who may hear it and who may need what you have. 
Now, Unison Marketplace, and Unison and Marketplace, I just, this is something I know the Army uses as a, where they post a lot of their requirements too. However, Unison does have a cost to it, I believe, for, mm -hmm. oh, yes, yes there's a fee to use Unison, um, but it's another place. Some, and now something else, and it's not listed on here, but uh, about five years ago, my youngest son was interested in a program on Saturdays, and he went on Saturdays. And as the parents were required to sell coffee and tea, and part of the fundraiser would go towards the, the program. And one of the things was basically was network marketing. And one of the things we had to do was sit down and make a list of everybody that you know. Well, I thought that was a very daunting task. And I didn't understand it then. But after I got into this position, I do understand it now by making a list of everybody that you know. Everybody that you know, do they have children? Do they have nieces and nephews? Um, it leads to opportunities. You're not trying to sell people, but you are trying to offer them a solution to their problem. But if that child has a problem with the computer, if there's internet connection problems, that's an opportunity for you to go to school. Hey, maybe I can offer my services. I can help you. So you don't want to overlook any task or any opportunity to present yourself in front of, um, of anybody. Um, and also don't consider just the government. Look at the state government, city government, um, hospitals, because um, there's, there are opportunities out here and they are out here waiting just for you. Okay. Okay. So my final thought is you wanna explore all opportunities. Many times I've heard people say, well, I can't get into GSA. I, Social Security doesn't respond back to me. I haven't heard anything from the IRS, but there are many government agencies. And this is a link to from A to Z of the government agencies. And you'd be surprised that all of these agencies, they have requirements. Um, for example, uh, I click on, I'm clicking on L, Legal Service Corporation. Now I've never heard of this agency before, but if you go on their website, Legal Services Corporation, you go to the bottom of the page. Doing business with LSC. Now, I believe that these are all expired right now, or they recently expired, but it has open RFPs. So even if you're not trying to subcontract it and you are trying to be a prime, there are, look at other opportunities. There are small agencies. For example, this was at a deadline on April 5th, but they were looking for project management services. I'm sure many people have never heard of Legal Services Corporation, but they're a smaller agency and their, their dollars are just as green as GSA, EPA, Social Security, and IRS. And they probably don't have as um, many people looking at them as some of your larger agencies, but they still have opportunities and there are opportunities that you possibly can fill that need. There's a ways that you can stay connected with some of these agencies put in your information. I want you to know that looking for opportunities, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. Um, you have to be persistent. You have to persevere. The race does not go to the swift. It goes to the one that can endure. Don't give up. It is your dream. You know your craft. Hang in there. I can't tell you when it'll happen, but it will. Just don't give up and hang in there. Do you have any questions? Oh, 
Uh, we, we, we don't have a question as of yet, but we do have a comment by uh, right. Tatiana. She says, I needed this. Thank you. This was uh, a lot of information, a lot of resources. Thank you very much for sharing this. And uh, just to let you all know, feel free to just either raise your hand or unmute your mic and ask the question. Um, Imani had a question. Yes, the Zoom uh, is recorded and we will uh, send, it, uh, send it to you in the next couple of days as we download and process. And uh, I would like to ask a question right now for everyone else's benefit. Can you touch on a role of certification like socioeconomic certification related to contracting? So there are socio use like a specific one like 8a or women owned the you know as a lot of our a lot of our clients are considering different certifications and how it can benefit them right so but the, and so any that they may qualify for woman owned veteran owned 8a yeah okay so what they would have to do is contact me or they could contact rose because and we would have to refer you to the different program managers because there are people that just specialize in the women-owned program mm -hmm. the 8a program the veteran-owned program so that's all that they handle so if you contact you know we provided our email address up there and i will refer you or rose will refer you to the appropriate program manager for each each um, socioeconomic uh, category. I'm talking to myself. I was on a mute for a second. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. Uh, says that can you provide contact information? So uh, if so we, we go can, back to I the believe, first slide, mm -hmm, first slide, we can also capture it and put it in the chat, Beth, maybe. I'll grab it and put it in the chat. Thank you, Beth. Okay. okay. We do have another question. Are okay. educational services considered for contracting? Yes. 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 Um, now, I don't, I have started at the SBA in January. So, and, and Rose, just like I said, she started in, um, in May. But at the previous agency, because we both worked for the previous agency, the same agency, um, we had contractors that came in and uh, gave training presentations. Right. So yeah. yes, they do. You know, I also want to open up the question segment to some of my counselors. Have you encountered uh, any questions that the businesses you're working with may have relative to subcontracting that the whole uh, group can benefit from? And were you talking to us? Yeah, I was just talking to you know anybody or even my counselors that are present here today, right? So that are working with businesses, you know, if they can convey some questions that they might have had relative to subcontracting that would benefit this group. So feel free to just unmute yourself and uh, you know, ask for everybody else's benefit. We do have a question uh, up from you know, Bruce, one of our experienced counselors. Can a prime count, uh, prime count as a self-certified SDB sub toward agency goals for minorities? Okay. Okay. Um, can they repeat that? Sure. Can a prime count as a self-certified SDB sub toward agency goals for minorities? I, I can I'm clarify that. about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, for most part, uh, goals are only uh, for minorities are only fulfilled with 8A contracts. But I was told that if a self-certified in SAM, self-certified as a small disadvantaged business, if they are a subcontractor, the prime contractor can count that and the agency can count that toward their minority goals. You, I, There was something that came out about that recently, but I, I, if you send that to me in an email, I will um, 
I will check on it and get back to you. Are you saying for 8A? Yeah. Bruce, are you specifically speaking about 8A? Or no, I think he's speaking about self people who self-certify when they register in SAM.gov. Right. You yeah. can self-certify, right? As with different socioeconomic designations, right? Woman or minority owned. So yeah, it, do, it, it, do depends, it do depends upon the, the, the social economical uh, category. Because if, you know, like ability one or whatever, they can self-certify, but it depends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear that phrase a lot. It depends in government. Yeah, it does depend <laughs> because, you know, each uh, social e economical have a different way of being certified according to the FAR and the Code of Federal Re Regulations. Mm -hmm. Okay. If Thanks. you want to send that to us in writing, mm -hmm. I will um, will follow up. Okay. Thank right. you. Yeah, I believe it, from our, our conversations with GSA, I believe that there are some instances they can count, but it, we are not clear just when they can count. Those self certification they can count and when they cannot. So thank you for looking into this. So we have a question from Tatiana. Is there any resources for specifically research subcontracting? The search. The research subcontracting. Yeah. Well, Tatiana, would, would you mind elaborating? Hello. Um, hmm. I am uh, starting my own small business and I have experience with subcontracting um, or contracting actually with. Um, my my previous employer and um it's specifically in um transportation safety researching but now that i'm doing this for myself <laughs> and i'm using all these resources um i don't know if there's anything specifically for uh researchers so um i'm an, an analyst i write research papers and stuff like that um is there anything like that it, probably not but thought i'd ask so what is your next code? What you would have to do. <laughs> didn't hear you. Uh, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, unfortunately. Okay. So you would have to search for opportunities based on your next code. Um, there are some agencies that do more in um, research. Sometimes I think Health and Human Services might. But if you do a search on SAM.gov or any of those other resources under the NAICS code that you have, then you may be able to find opportunities that way. Well, yeah, I would just like to make a suggestion to Tatiana. You know, if you, if, if you don't have a counselor right now, we are happy to assign you a counselor and we can assist you with this research. I think, you know, when you're creating a path toward government marketing, understanding how government has previously purchased what you're looking to sell is extremely helpful. And for that, we use a primarily a database called FPDS, Federal Procurement Database System. And based on NAICS codes and keywords, we try to find out how government has previously purchased what you're looking to sell. So we can certainly assist you with that, right? In addition to that, we can research SAM and some other platforms to see if there's any um, current solicitations relative to that product or service, and they are usually associated with uh, NAICS codes. So we have a question. So what is a NAICS code? Okay. So that's basically how you identify the services that you're offering. If it's administrative, which is what, 51419, mm -hmm identifies this is what this is this is my specialty that is your specialty and a lot of um agency you know, a lot of vendors have more than one next um sometimes they have up to i think usually like 10 you have area of a specialty expertise in various areas then you would include those and that identifies you that helps you search for opportunities mm -hmm. and uh Thank you, Lucy. I see she contributed by giving you a, a website that would be helpful relative to transportation and subcontracting. Thank you so much for that. And for everyone else's 
benefit, I put a source that will help you identify next codes. Those next codes also change from time to time. So you will, see, you know, and it happens about every five years or so, you can find out a current next codes and any previous next code that might've been associated with that product or service on this particular website. So. Not only that, for your next code, that identifies your size, right? So either it's say for what's, What's five four one nine? Talking about the, the actual the revenue. So it'll tell you the dollars mm -hmm. that you can exceed to be still be considered small, or the number of employees that you have. Mm -hmm. And you can be small if you have multiple next codes. You can be small in two and large in one and another. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely want to look at your next code because mm -hmm. if if you're in the wrong next code and you apply for uh, something that's set aside for a small business, you will get a challenge. Mm -hmm. We'll challenge it. Mm -hmm. You want to yeah, be I'm careful with the next. Code. That is very helpful, and I'm glad you brought that point, Rosetta. So, would you mind just uh, for those that are not aware, just elaborate a little bit on set asides and, and how they work? Well, I think we have them frozen. We're going to give them a minute. Mm -hmm. Did we lose you, Fitzia and Rosetta? Okay. Well, while they are trying to reconnect, I am. Uh, I have a question here. Would you connect me to a counselor? So yes, if you currently do not have a counselor, you are welcome to reach out to uh, our general email. And I'm gonna put it here in a chat. And Beth here is usually primary person that assigns counselors depending on your needs and your region. So yes, so if you currently do not have one, we are happy to assign you with, uh, with a counselor and you can have one-on-one -on -one session and really uh, tailor your uh, marketing government, uh, government uh, pardon me, <laughs> marketing to government approach alongside with your individual counselors. Okay, I have Fitzia and Rosetta here. Did you hear my oh, last I'm question? I'm sorry, no, you were thousand. So okay, okay, no worries. You mentioned <laughs> set aside. So, right. So my question, you mentioned set aside. So for those who are not aware, would you uh, mind elaborating on what set asides are and the role they play in government contracting? So with, um, with set asides or when you, when the person or procurement agency set aside, when they go, uh, let's say for small business, they're saying it's a hundred percent set aside because they had through market research came to find that they had two or more small businesses. So they, you know, specifically, whether it's woman owned or, uh, small disadvantage, um, they set it aside just for uh, that particular social economical category. And then that's the way they would go and say, this is restricted for small business because through the market research, uh, um, through the pre-award stage, they realized that they had two or more, and that's the rule in the FAR. Anytime you find two or more small businesses, then you should be setting it aside just for small businesses. Mm. Right. Great. And so you're so partially yeah. mm -hmm. a you large partially, business can't come in. Mm -hmm. You partially answered my questions. How does government decide to uh, make a particular solicitation to set aside? So um, basically, when the requirement, we look at the, the requirements looked at, and the market research will determine. Like Rose said, um, the sources that are available that can meet the requirement. If you have two or more in a particular socioeconomic category, then you're supposed to set it aside. Mm -hmm. And once it's set aside, it's just for them. It also helps the agency meet their goals. Mm -hmm. So and it really I'll, shrinks I'll, down yes. a pool of competition, right? For businesses that qualify under that set aside. 
Well, you were frozen one second. Yeah. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I'm sorry. So it's the set aside, it really narrowed down a pool of competition. Yes. For those businesses that qualify under that right. category. You got it. So, you know, as we are looking through Sam uh, and we do research with our clients, we do a lot of different types of solicitations. Some of those are pre-solicitations. Are those the methods by which government does market research to decide if something's going to be a set aside? Well, well normally, um, when a, a requirement is, when a, a commodity, different commodities come out, uh, the, the agency do go out for a source of sort. And they go to look at, they put it out on FedBizOps, you know, depending. And they try to find out uh, what people, what the businesses um, respond. And if they find that, do that response, they got two or more small businesses. That's determining that they have the uh, small business out there. And then they proceed to go and uh, move forward with that particular procurement that way. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's really, market research is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very important for businesses to uh, look at these resources that we gave you today, because um, a lot of times uh, when the contracting activity is looking, that's what they're going through. They're going, they, they're putting it out there um, and they're looking for the responses. The responses is very important to determine what social economical category they're going to procure with with that particular uh, requirement. Mm -hmm. In the market research, that, that it varies. Um, there are all different types of of resources they can use. Like you mentioned, FPDS. They can do a source of sought. They can look at previous procurements, similar requirements. Mm -hmm. um, you can look at um, what else? There's there the a small business web, a small business dynamic search tool, mm -hmm. um, and then the capability statements that people mm -hmm. submitted, mm -hmm. or they go to their small business specialist and mm -hmm. ask for sources. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you for that insight. That is very important. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question for uh, for women owned. What requirements do you have? Well, we don't get requirements because we're not actually the agency. As PCRs, what we do is we see the um, the coordination record that comes in for um, from an installation that'll say, okay, this is our requirement. Please review it. We will review it and determine whether or not this is something a small business can do. If mm -hmm. they can, then we challenge it. Um, so basically, we don't receive the, the requirements ourselves. Okay. They don't come to us. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what you want to do, because I saw that question pop up, think about what is it that you have a passion for? What is it that you want to do? What is it that you can do that will solve a problem for someone else? Mm -hmm. So those are the questions you could think about in helping you decide what you want to do. And just to piggyback on your answer, Bella, um, so for woman-owned business, if you want to find out if your business does qualify for that particular certification, feel free, to out, feel free to reach to one of our counselors. We were happy to walk you through that. And we've also happy to walk you through which particular NAICS codes woman-owned business certification qualify for as a set aside. Yes, because there are certain yeah. ones. There are certain ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So Vernice is asking for work field, and you have not been business for over two years. I, I didn't understand. What about social work field, and you have not been in business for over two years? Vernice is asking. Okay, social work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, for as far as not being in business for two years, um, if you're looking for opportunities, you're probably your best bet. And if you don't have any past performance, would be to subcontract partner with another firm. It doesn't have to be a large business. It could be a small business. Um, take advantage of um, mentor protege programs. Or joint or, ventures. Or joint ventures. Now, as far as social work, that, of course, you would also have to be within a certain NAICS code. 
There are ways to work within the social work field. Well, I mean, I, I guess you could always volunteer and get some experience that way. Mm -hmm. We also you have, have to look up what the NAICS code for social work is. Correct. We're happy to do that research with you. Bella has a question. Uh, any suggestions we can build our muscles uh, in small ways to finally get a contract? Anyway, the business has to be structured. No, no particular way it has to be structured. Um, mm -hmm. But it's important to, to, that you um, attend as many, and I know sometimes you can't, travel a great distance, but if there are virtual events, virtual site visits, pre-proposal conferences, even if it's not exactly what you're interested in, but if you're able to network and talk to people and connect with people, um, take advantage of those opportunities. Um, that's one way you get yourself known. People get to know you. And then, you know, and you you build a you have to build a relationship. It's it's that's what it's mainly about. Well, a lot of times, if you can part or become a uh, subcontractor to a prime, and that prime has already established themselves with history, um, that's a good way to come in with federal contracts. But it's just making sure you, like uh, Fitzy said, network with the proper uh, prime. So that you subcontract in with them. So that's another way as well. And so the resources that we provided, if you start taking a couple of those companies, those vendors, look at what they offer. Um, what do they offer? How can you support them and contact them? It's basically you're pitching yourself to them and why you are a the best candidate for that situation. But you have to know something about the company and what they've done in the, in the past. And FPDS and G will, will help with that too, but you can see some of the contracts and, the, and, and network. And, and as I said, don't, don't just look at the federal government. There's the state, there's the city, there's the county, there's schools, there's hospitals. So you just want to get your foot in the door and you want to make a good impression. You want to do a good job so that you can use that experience as past performance. And that helps too. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't see any questions. Uh, anybody else over else wants to chime in? It doesn't have to be in a chat. Before I thank our guests, I just you know wanted to give you one more chance. Also, as a follow up, uh, feel free to email us at that email I listed, ptac at cristown.edu. Whether you need a counselor that you want to you know partner up with to discuss needs of government contracting for your particular business any additional resources as Beth has mentioned in the chat this presentation will you will you will be able to find in our YouTube channel along with other webinars we have held that you may find instrumental and um, also we will be sharing this presentation with you so thank you all uh, for participating today we had a really nice turnout